Well, praise God and welcome to the Leah on the Light. We're going to be covering Mark, the, the latter part of Mark chapter 3 and Mark chapter 4. I meant to cover the latter part of Mark, Mark chapter 3 a couple of days ago. Vicissitudes of life, if you know what I mean. They, they, they love to hit you when you least expect it. Uh, the adversary just loves. How do I say it? He loves to hit. He loves to hit you when you least expect it. And but it's okay because you know what you can do. Okay, Matthew chapter three, verse twenty. And the multitude uh, coming together again, so that they could not as much as eat bread. That had to be difficult. And when his friends heard of it, they went out to lay hold on him, for they said, he is beside himself. It's called the saying, he, he, he's out of his mind. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath the hells above, and by the prince of the devils casteth he out devils. Now, can you believe this? He's kind of like he's kind of like telling these guys, "Hey, how can Satan cast out Satan?" And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, the house cannot stand. And if Satan rises up against himself, and he divide and be divided, he cannot stand, but hath an end. And verse verse twenty seven. I love what he says here in verse twenty seven. No man can enter into a strong man's house. And spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. And and then came certain men unto him, accusing him, saying. Why do we receive uh, sinners, seeing thou uh, makest thyself the Son of God? But he answered them and said, Verily I say unto you, All sins which men have committed, when they repent, shall be forgiven them. For I come to preach repentance unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme shall be forgiven them that come unto me. And do the works which they see me do. But there is a sin which shall not be forgiven. He that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of being uh, cut down out of the world. And they will inherit eternal damnation. 
And this he said unto them, because they said, he hath an unclean spirit. Are you know that, that Jesus is answering all these questions? You know, the multitude's throwing him. Verse 31. Then came then his brethren and his mother, and standing without, sent unto him, calling him. You know, his first family. And they're, sitting, they're just standing outside, and they want to see him. In verse 32, And the multitudes set about him, and they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. And he answered them and said, Who is my mother and who is my brethren? And he looked round about on them which sat about him and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren, for whosoever that do the will of God the same is my brother and sister and mother. Now, I don't think Jesus meant anything wrong towards his family. No. Of course not. But I honestly, honestly think that Jesus said what he said to kind of relate to us. Sometimes that family is not always blood. Jesus' family, they, they, his, his brothers and sisters, except for maybe... Uh, Judas and James, they didn't get him. They did not get him. And if you think about it, okay, Mark chapter 4, he begins to um, expound about the parable of the sower. And here's some verses, we're going to get to because it's just those. 41 verses, we're only going to do cliff notes today. We're going to do verses 5 through 7. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth. It immediately sprang up. It sprang up because it had no depth of, of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched. And because it had no root, it was rift away. Now, you can relate that with business, and you can relate that to with the gospel. I have a good friend of mine that, uh, you know, at first he joined the gospel, and he was kind of fraudulent to some extent, but, but he didn't have the root. And, and verse 7, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And of course, it talks about those who fell among the good ground, you know, 30 fold, 60 fold, and 100 fold. And I really think that God calls us to be the ones. That fall on the good ground so we can prosper. But what that means is try to understand our covenant roots and why we accepted the gospel. Especially as converts. Because it can be easy to fall away sometimes. Verse 11. And Jesus said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them, meaning, you know, um, some of the, the crowds within that are now all these things 
are done in parables. Verse 12, I'm going to mark verse 12. That seeing they may see and not perceive. And hearing they may, they may hear but not understand. You, you understand where I'm going there? Now. Verse 15 through 17. And these are they by the wayside. When the word is sown. But when they have heard. Satan cometh immediately. And take away the word. That was sown. In their hearts. See Satan loves to do that. Some he just loves to, to just scoop up immediately. And these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard it, heard the word, immediately received it with gladness, and have no root in themselves. And that can be said at any of us, any of us at any time. And so endure, but for a time. Afterwards, when afflictions or persecutions ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. But you think about verse 20. I want you to think about verse 20, because this deals with, um, and these are they which are sowed on good ground, such as have, hear the word, and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixtyfold, and some in hundredfold. You know that that's got to bless your heart, right? That's got to bless your heart. And this is something that Christ said, beginning in verse 23. Um, if any man have ears to hear, let him hear. A lot of richness here. Verse 25. For he that receiveth to him shall be given. But he that continueth not to receive from him shall be taken, even that which he hath. That makes sense. D doesn't it to you? And it goes along with verse 26. And he said, So is the kingdom of God. He says, A man should cast seed into the ground <coughs> and should sleep and rise night and day. And the seed should spring and grow up. He knoweth not how. I really think that this has to deal with the essence, the essence of faith. And, and I, I can't even imagine any further on this. Now, I hope you enjoy listening to Leon on Light. If you like what you hear, please subscribe, become a part of the Leon Hamal Light family. This is Jimmy Hendrick saying until next time, remember who you are, read your scriptures, and please, please, please preach the gospel. God bless you.